This is Shibuya, and many women are looking for sugar daddy in this park. Why is this happening? Isn't Japan one of the top richest country in the world? Hell no! Not anymore! Japanese economy was rising rapidly and it came within top 5 in 1991. But now Japan doesn't even come within top 25 worldwide, surpassed by Korea and Spain in terms of GDP per capita. The average Japanese annual income is only 31,000 US dollars, which is about half of the average in the US. That's already pretty low, but what's crazy is that women in Japan only earn 50% of men's salary. This unfortunately means many times women have to do what's not ideal for them in order to get by, pay their tuition, or maintain their lifestyle. This is partly why many Japanese female college students work in Kyabakura or hostess bar where they pour alcohol and chat with men and they get paid for that. It pays much more than the minimum hourly wage of only 6.6 .6 US dollars. Technically speaking, there's nothing more than pouring alcohol and chatting with them, but you can easily imagine sexual harassment taking place routinely in those kind of circumstances. And then there's Anjo Kosai or Papakatsu. Literal translation is support relationship or daddy search. It is essentially a shoot daddy arrangement. Girls, sometimes underage girls, go on social media, mainly Twitter, to find older men. All on the street near Okubo Park and Ikebukuro in Tokyo, and Umeda and Namba in Osaka. You might be wondering how this is allowed to go on without police's involvement arresting these people, but the logic goes that it's legal to fall in love based on the principle of free will, even on the street. And whether it is illegal is a gray zone, in fact, unless the police can catch them at the scene of agreeing to providing certain services in exchange for money, which can be done only by undercover in most cases. Again, for the most part, it is a companionship thing, but it is quite common in Japan as a part-time job, and many women do this with the knowledge of their partners even. I don't think it's as commonplace in other parts of the world, but how is it like in your country? Let me know in the comment section below. Have you taken a Japanese taxi? Taxi drivers are dressed in sleek uniforms and they even wear white gloves. Plus, you don't even have to open or close the door because it's all automatic. You probably heard of term ikigai or life purpose. Japanese people often find their life purpose in work and take pride in what they do. The most famous story is an elderly cleaner who's been cleaning the office toilet for more than 40 years. What's beautiful about this story is that she does such an amazing job that everyone in the office respects her. So is everything rosy in Japan like this? Hell no! This is a double-edged sword. Corporate Japan takes advantage of this and makes people do great jobs without paying them properly, expecting them to perform professionally. Japanese minimum wage is a meager $6.6 .6 for God's sake. There are endless examples from teachers, caretakers, to sushi apprentices, and anime cartoonists being subjected to this kind of exploitation. Junior manga or anime cartoonists are notorious for being overworked and underpaid. Even those who work for famous authors are said to be paid less than $8 to $10 an hour, and often not paid for overtime at that. The authors are usually not the one benefiting from this either. It's usually the publishers who impose crazy conditions on the authors. After knowing this, unfortunately, I get this uneasy feeling every time I watch my favorite anime. Don't! Polka dots on pumpkins, polka dots on octopus, polka dots even on your fancy Louis Vuitton bag. The name of the artist behind this is Kusama Yayoi. Do you know where she is now? This world famous artist publicly announced her mental illness and committed herself to a psychiatric institution in Japan since 1977. I can proudly say that I have been to therapy too, but many Japanese would never admit that they have. Stigma against mental illness and depression is real here in Japan. Officially, Japan has the lowest reported rate of mental disorder among the high income countries at only 8%. 
percent. This is much lower compared to 26 percent in the United States and 18 percent in France. However, Japan also has the highest number of per capita beds in the psychiatric wards in the hospital or institution. It is not hard to put the pieces of the puzzle together here. Social stigma makes it hard for people to obtain early care, so many people are pushed to the edge. One things become unmanageable, they are put into mental asylum, something out of the horror movie almost. Japan is known to be an orderly country, but you see drunk people everywhere, sleeping in the train, on a metro platform, and even on the street. What's really going on here? Japan is a country of strict social norms. These social norms are usually like no jaywalking and no eating on a train and quite sensible. But there are more nuanced social norms for almost all situations, especially at work. These are detailed rules from who sits where in a meeting room, who enters the room first, to how to bow when the elevator door is closing. When I first started working in the bank, I was so shocked to get harsh feedback on how I stapled the presentation materials together. They were not happy that staples were not in the same angle and some of the paper edges were not perfectly aligned. Yes, you got that right. You are expected to be an origami expert if you wanted to work for a bank. How do people get away from this pressure and social norms? By drinking, of course. Funny enough, social norms do not apply to drunk people, and that's why we go wild drinking in izakaya and karaoke and even on the street. One positive thing is that these drunken salaried men or women can go back to work the next day as if nothing happened. Yes, no one is supposed to judge what happened during these vomit-filled drinking sessions. Lovely, isn't it? Japanese youngsters paying respect to the elderly, isn't it just so precious? Hell no, not necessarily. Yes, it is nice to pay respect to people's age and the amount of experiences accumulated over the years, but it also establishes a massive hierarchy that many times doesn't make any sense at all. In the company, older people get promotions for no obvious reasons other than age, and at home, the older son gets a favorable treatment, often getting a larger chunk of inheritance. I heard it's even worse in Korea where elderly sometimes cut the queue to demand being served first in the stores. Is it really true? I don't believe it, but if you have any experience, let me know in the comment below. Anyways, this seniority pyramid in modern days leaves people with a sense of unfairness and it is definitely exerting a negative impact on the development of the Japanese economy. Well, I'm still 21, so I still have to wait quite a long time to get that special treatment. No intention to scare you off here because Japan has so many things to offer. I also have a video you might be interested in here and then there's a video about dark side of Japanese food. So click here and I'll see you there. And if you could please, please, please subscribe and smash that like button. It means a lot to me. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. Arigato gozaimasu. Sayonara.